Hey everybody, welcome to another QTP tutorial brought to you by www.qtptutorial.net. I am very glad that everybody's here today joining us because we are going to explore UFT version 11.5 and this is part two of the video. If you missed part one, go ahead and catch it. You will know exactly what we're talking about here. And let's go ahead and pick right back up where we left off. So we were in here and I think I wanted to show you guys a little bit more about the local variables, the console and the call stack just to make sure that everybody's clear. So I placed a variable in here called A and let's place another variable. So this variable is going to be outside of the functions. So this is what's called the global variable and this is the local variable to this function. These are very common terms in development coding and it is called the scope of a variable. It's a very important concept. I think one day I'll go over it with you guys, but today I'll just give you a quick synopsis. So what it means is that a variable cannot be accessed by a place where it doesn't exist. So for example, if you wanted to see the color of your neighbor's bed, you would not be able to see it because that bed is local to your neighbor's house. But if you wanted to see your own, you could because it's your house and inside of your house, you can access everything that is yours. So think of the same thing for a function where inside of that function lives all of the stuff all of the beds that are accessible to that function but outside of the function or the function is synonymous with house the function cannot access other variables and let me show you guys what i mean by that too okay cool and let's just go ahead and run through this f5 to run just like normal and we're going to step into with f11 check out the call stack Function B is the first one called, okay? And let's go look at the local variables now. Now, guys, we are inside of function B. Let's check out the local variables. There are none so far. Now, we have one variable because it just got declared, and that's variable testing. You guys see how it has a value of A? And because this variable is global, so you can imagine that this variable, it's you and your neighbor, right? You guys are on the same street. This is like the grass that's outside of both of your houses. And if you guys want to go look and see what's going on with the grass outside of the house, both of you are able to do it. Why? Because the grass is enclosing both of your houses. Your houses are inside of the grass. And so because you are inside of the grass, you can both look out and see what's going on with the grass. And that's the same thing that's happening here, is that the VBScript global code is enclosing all of these functions. And anything that's in the VBScript global code, global is the key word, can be accessed by these functions, okay? So let's continue. Now we're going to call function A, and let's check out the call stack. You guys see that? It went on top. So after everything is done, I guess let's let it error out. The functions, they would dissipate from the top down. Cool. Now we are in the next function. And you guys can see that here the call stack has changed because we are in the function library. And let's check out the local variables now, which are going to be local to what? What if we are inside of a new action, right? So that means that this action is going to contain many local variables that are only local to it, and it'll be a good amount. Let's check it out. You guys see that? So it's this number of letters and and this. Okay? That's what's local to this function, local variables. If we wanted to see the value of something else, like, here's what's not local. Here's your neighbor's house, guys. Okay, your neighbor's house is right here. Here's his bed, this variable. 
I want to add it to watch. Remember control T. That's one other thing I don't get that has been going on with UFT is sometimes I have to add the variable to watch two times until before it appears. The other method we can do is do this. We can click add new expression and then we can manually type it in. But so check it out, you guys. You guys see how this variable is not defined because it's not inside of your house. It's not inside of this function and therefore this function can't access it because it's inside of this function. Now, if the variable was out here in the grass, so for example, this guy, this one has a value. You guys see that? So if I wanted to use this value inside of my function, it would be a piece of cake. I just have to use it. Now, let's continue. I hope this is all making sense, guys. Call stack can be a little bit complicated, and the scope of variables can be a little bit complicated. I know many automation engineers who don't even have this concept down. So if you guys get this concept down, it will be very impressive. So now, we're just going to run through this loop, and I am just going to actually get out of here because I don't want to run through this whole loop. I was just trying to show you guys the call stacks. So I think we can run it up to here. Okay, ran it. And now we're back here, back to this script. All our local variables are now only testing, which is in here. And then that's it. And that was that. That was the call stack, the local variables. And let me show you guys some more things that this console feature that I really like can do. So the console feature allows you to execute any VB script statements while you're debugging. So I showed you, you can assign values to variables. You can even invoke methods of objects. So for example, if you want to see some methods that this object has, like add, okay, we can do it. So let's try. Sorry, remove that. F5 to run. Okay, let's go to the console and do this. So I added a dictionary object called A with a value of value. Okay, now if I want to see it, Oh, I should have printed for you guys. There you go. Bring it back by using the down key. Check it out. It shows you the value here in the print log. I just printed it out just to show you guys the value. I think the other thing that old QTP used to do can come here, do that, add it. it there it has the value. And you guys can even come in here in the object and you can't see any of its methods. That's one thing that this UFT is lacking, but no worries. Cool, so let me stop this script. And let's go back over here and let's see what I covered. I covered that QTP is very clean. I covered that multiple scripts can be opened at once. And you guys just saw how I was easily navigating from script to script copying things, pasting things, modifying things, no big deal, as long as they are attached to the same solution. And then I showed you guys the debugger, which is probably not the most important part that you should learn for automation, but just the most important part that you guys should probably get out of this video is everything that I was doing with the debugger. I have known countless automation engineers who cannot even use the debugger, and I have no idea how they do their debugging. It's very sad. It's very slow. They're very ineffective and we would never hire them for our positions. So don't be one of those guys. Make sure you guys learn what we teach you. I can promise you that, you know, if it takes you a year, maybe two years to learn everything that we are teaching, 
you guys are going to be at the top of your game with these QTP tutorials. And you can easily be making, you know, $120,000, $40,000 per year doing this kind of stuff. So what you have to ask yourself is two years worth it for me to increase my salary to $140,000 per year? That's the kind of question that you want to ask yourself. And I can't answer that for you. All I can do is teach you guys everything that I know just so to help you progress with your career, but also just to help create a better automation community so that we can help each other. Because I, through my experience, have found that the way I learn is from other expert individuals. They don't actually don't even have to be expert. There are some beginners that have taught me so many things that I did not know before. And all it takes is sitting down for five minutes with somebody and watching them do what they do before you realize, oh man, here's something new that I learned. And then we go into a discussion and my knowledge is that much more expanded. That's the best way to learn, guys. At some point, your own vision, your own studying becomes extremely burdensome because when you reach that pinnacle of knowledge, it's extremely hard to find more knowledge. So in a community, it's much easier because we can exchange this knowledge. So that's what we're striving to do with QTPTutorial.net. So I think I've covered pretty much everything here, guys. It's been two parts. Overall, I want to tell you what I think about UFT. I like it, how it's very clean, how they've improved a lot of features, but it is extremely buggy. I've already had it crash on me so many times, and I am actually very upset. That's what exactly what I was worried about, is when I heard that they were coming out with a completely new design, I thought that what was going to happen is they're going to forget about all of the bugs that were happening, they're going to improve the functionality, but at the same time, they're going to introduce a lot more bugs. And I believe that that's exactly what they did, which is very unfortunate. They had a very great product with QTP 11. I enjoyed it. Of course, it crashed like normal, but I thought, hey, you know, a few more cycles of QTP releases, maybe these guys will get it down where our development can be almost seamless. But they did something like Windows 8, where they took a great system, they've completely redesigned it. And as a result, they kind of messed it up. And to be honest, I'm a bit unhappy. I am probably not going to continue using UFT 11.5. I'm going to go back to my QTP 11, continue working on it until all these new bugs are removed from the versions. But don't let my experiences stop you guys from using it. Make sure you do take it out, play with it. You get free 30 days. Enjoy it. See what you can do with it take it for a drive. It's not going to cost you guys anything but a little bit of your time. But again, for that time, it's a learning experience. And that's how you guys grow. That's how you grow your careers. That's how you grow your income. That's how you become better at your job. So anyways, sorry I went off on a spiel. Sometimes, you know, I just got all these thoughts in my head and I want to let you guys know everything that I'm thinking. Don't want to hold anything back. If you guys liked what you saw, we would really appreciate if you go to our website and sign up for our email list. It's not only beneficial for us because we get to keep track of all your emails and I have known multiple individuals who have ran websites like this and sometimes for unforeseen circumstances, whether Google goes down, Facebook kicks you out, Twitter kicks you out, LinkedIn kicks you out, we don't have any control of that. But we do have a control of our email list. And if we have you guys on our email list and for some reason our website is ever told that we have to stop, we will have all you guys and we can transfer it to a whole new domain wherever we go. We can take it and you guys never have to lose contact with us. You guys will always know where we are. And that is the most important part, that email list. And for all your troubles, you get so much stuff for free like our top five tools that we use to enhance our automation careers. You'll receive Function Friday's code in your inbox every single Friday. You guys will get the latest news about the upcoming webinars. Like we had an intro to Frameworks webinar. Everybody loved it. And if you weren't on our emailing list, you, you missed out because it was free. And I bet everybody learned a ton. And finally, we'll have a new section coming out soon where people subscribe to our email will be able to access it through the VIP area, and in there, they'll get all the best content 
that you can't find anywhere else on the web. So yeah, just stick with us, guys. Again, we're trying to build that community, and we appreciate any help you guys offer, any kind of promotions you want to do, you know, if you want to share our links, you know, you want to make comments, it all helps us grow as one unified team. That's funny, I kind of just created the new UFT slogan, unified team. Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed this intro to UFT 11.5. I just showed you some of the basic features. We can get into it much more in the future where I think I want to show you guys API test so that everybody learns web services because I know this is a very highly popular topic. Okay, take care.